what is up? Man, uh, your brother got tagged uh, in a video to produce a video in response to um, the midway point of 2023. Uh, the beautiful Stephanie Mendez hit her brother up and I watched a video. I thought this was very clever, you know, and YouTube, sometimes things get kind of stale and how we do videos or how we collaborate with people. I thought this was fresh and a very cool original idea that she came up with, you know. Um, I know that she does a lot of monthly videos. Those are things I don't do or participate in, but this is a way to get my attention and to get me to talk about how I feel about Hollywood uh, and what they've produced so far midway through the year. So again, Stephanie, thank you for including me in this video, AKA being tagged. She, she tagged that ass and uh, I'm gonna give you my viewpoints uh, so far. Right now, Sacramento, man, it's over 107 degrees. I got the AC blasting. You damn near gotta walk around naked right now. It is hot as all to be damned. But uh, I digress. On with the um, uh, the movie selection, midway through the point of 2023. Now, the first category was most disappointing movie. It hurts me and it pains my heart to say this, but it was Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. They never should have made this movie. I was cool ending it on the Crystal Skull, but Disney, once again, got their hands on an IP. Like a vampire, they suck all the energy and life out of it. And this movie just embarrassed itself with the high production budget, it flopped at the theater. And the second week, little Insidious knocked it out the number one spot. It's just so many storylines that makes this movie just so disappointing, man. It, it truly hurts my soul. Worst movie of the year. Fear. It was a small indie film that came out called Fear. And I guess the premise was, um, whatever your fear is, it comes to life and manifests. And yeah, that movie was cheap, badly acted, shot terribly. It was just bad. I hate saying that because this director is a cool dude. I like his films, but this one here, he totally missed the, the mark. It was bad. Now you got... Um, Best action movie of the year? Uh, that would have to go to John Wick 4. I just don't know how action movies can't compete with this movie for years to come. That movie was a tour de force. Keanu Reeves is at his apex doing action and stunts and I love this movie. You know, my favorite scene, my man's doing donuts in a muscle car with no doors doing headshots. How do you compete with that? I tell you how. You can't. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, that was the best action movie. Um, best horror movie of the year for me would have to be Megan. It wasn't scary. It was uh, it was thrilling. It had some tense moments. Uh, very original. Uh, it had some laugh out loud moments. Maybe not intentionally, but I really enjoyed that film. Uh, as of now, at the midway point, Megan will definitely be my favorite horror movie of the year. Hmm. My funniest movie of the year? That's easy. That is The Blackening. This movie had <laughs> such raw and unapologetic comedy that was geared towards minorities that had me laughing out loud. And my theater I was in, the participation was incredible. We all loved it. We got the jokes. And um, definitely my favorite uh, comedy of the year. Funniest movie of the year. And it's kind of like also my favorite movie of the year so far. But speaking of favorite movie of the year, I'm going to have to give that title to Spider-Man across the um, verse, the Spider-Verse. The movie's peerless. It's it's, it's impeccable it is wonderful um again if you know me and my channel i really like 
minority culture being brought to the forefront. Just like I loved and cherished the blackening Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, this movie has a black and brown lead. Parents are both of different ethnicities and then he's in love with a white girl. It covers all the bases. I thought that was really cool. And it happened to be a superhero movie and it dealt with multiverses and stuff and I wasn't confused. I enjoyed that movie. Most surprising movie. For me, it was a small indie film that came out earlier this year called um, Thousand and One. It's about a young lady who um, did something, did some boosting, went to prison for a few years. When she got out, she's trying to put her family back together and make things work. And it just takes place in New York. It's a typical hood ghetto love story, and I loved it. It had a nice twist at the end that I didn't see coming, but definitely um, my most surprised movie of the year. Had a female black director. Just everything about this movie was really, really good. Um, most anticipated movie of this year, still to come, I'm going to say Oppenheimer. I'm a history buff. Uh, Christopher Nolan is a great director. Um, I haven't watched none of his movies. Uh, well, I did see Tenet, but other than that, in the past 10 years, none of his movies excited me. The last one I seen was Interstellar, and I didn't like the ending. So I'm looking forward to actually going to a theater and watching a Christopher Nolan film for the first time in about 10 years. Hmm. Most underrated movie of the year so far. M. Night Shyamalan's Knock at the Cabin. That movie was cool. It was intense. I love thrillers that take place in one central location. That's old school filmmaking. And the movie had my attention. Was some things predictable? Yeah. Did the trailers give away a little bit too much? Maybe. But for the most part, everybody that's seen that movie enjoyed it. I just didn't hear a whole lot of buzz right after the movie came out, but I think it's definitely underrated. One of his better films. And um, it was a great theatrical experience. The cinema I went to, the crowd was into it. It had everything that you want. He had a little cute Asian girl uh, being threatened by these these people, the, um, the, 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 the three horsemen, basically. And... Um, I thought it was clever. And I liked the location, that cabin. You know, brothers don't do cabins, so I was scared from, from, from jump. Yeah, woods, cabins, nah, bruh. City, hotel, I'm straight. But yo, that's it. And thank you again, Stephanie, uh, for tagging that ass. I had a good time. Again, original content on YouTube. I don't think you get enough credit for what you bring to YouTube, so keep up the good work. Look forward to doing this again. As far as upcoming projects for me, uh, yesterday I released my latest short film, Speed Racer 2. Be sure to check that out. Next Sunday, I'm doing another Director's Talk Live. We're going to discuss the new film, They Cloned Tyrone, starring Jamie Foxx and John Boyega. And we'll probably talk about the ills of the strike in Hollywood. I'm going to go see Oppenheimer this week. Most likely do a review for that. And I might have to mess around and check out Barbie, man. I'm hearing great things about Barbie. So I I might go see Barbie, y'all. I never thought I'd be saying that. Man, that's, that's crazy. But yo, thank you for watching. Be sure to like, share, subscribe. Tell all your friends. And more importantly, leave your comments down low. And I'm out. And you know the routine. Fade to black.